injuries, and illness are inevitable in our lives. Certainly not by choice. Sometimes the gap between us and relief is only bridged with prescription. But that relief may come at a cost. The balance of nature. Addiction is a natural response to an unnatural world. We're conditioned to believe a doctor swinging his mighty pen is the route to relief, or the FDA's approval must mean it's safe. But what if a pure actually exists, free from addictive chemicals and catalogs of side effects, created by some of the most brilliant minds? Would something so healing be too hard to believe? What if? My journey into Asian medicine started as a patient. I was sick, I was in my mid-20s, and one night I couldn't breathe. My heart was pounding. I felt acid coming up from my stomach. So I kept going back to the ER and they kept telling me that I had anxiety. I got put on Xanax and after about a week on Xanax, I couldn't sleep without Xanax. I'm Yadi Alamin, head clinician at Charlotte AccuBody Work, head instructor of Eastern Traditional Healing Arts, 22 years experience in the field. I was scared to have another episode where my heart would race because I never wanted to take the Xanax again. And I tried doing yoga, taking herbs, going to Whole Foods, and a whole bunch of other stuff. And I got to the point where I was suicidal. And I called my mother and said, Ma, I just want to die. My mother said, don't kill yourself. Go to an acupuncturist. So she sent me money. And I found some guy in a book called The Monthly Aspectarian. And it was just a Chinese guy in a kung fu suit. So I thought, OK, I'll, he's an acupuncturist. I went to Dr. Lee for the first time. He felt my pulse, looked at my tongue, and in this exact way said, you liver, spleen, kidney. So this is Chicago, midwinter. There's like a radiator here that's putting out heat. There's a bunch of books on the shelf, and the pages are yellow. And the place kind of smells like liniment. I'm having trouble breathing because I'm really hypersensitive now to everything, but I'm like skin and bones. I'm just hoping that something happens. He does some kind of massage, put lotion on top of me, and then put needles on me. And about 15 minutes later, I could breathe normally as if I had never been sick. My heart was slow, and I felt like I was a living person instead of a corpse for the first time in a year. So I didn't know what he did but I thought I was cured, and it turns out I wasn't, and I ended up going back for eight months, cost me a lot of money. At the end of it, I just begged to be a student and became his first American student, and that's how it started. Nothing happens by chance, and usually there's a larger purpose to what may seem like a random event. As Yadi's new journey advances, his vision would soon connect with another's someone 2,000 miles away in the desert of California. Hello, I'm Brian David Anderson, and I give myself a title of independent researcher, scientist, and uh, inventor. I discovered Yachty when I was looking for an oxyhydrogen device. And I went researching, that type of thing, and I found him on the internet. And then we started talking about oxyhydrogen devices. And I was showing him some of my stuff, and he went on the website, and he bought uh, one of the Tazas, and, um, and the rest is history. Moving liquid creates an electromagnetic field. That means that every cell in our body and every vessel, every liquid that moves through it creates an electromagnetic field. It is my hypothesis that the neuron activity in the nervous system fires into those electromagnetic fields, creating what the Indias call chakras, and in the Far East, acumeridians and acupoints. The traditional way of believing, and it started out in the 1850s, is that the cell is always being assaulted. 
I feel that the cell works in the totally opposite type of manner. It works as a river. The organs of the body all have liquids flowing through them. The cell is most likely the same thing. Planet Earth, what does it do? It has water flowing through it. A life is water. Life is fluids. Life is moving, flowing. It is not just a constant stagnation type of thing. Very, very important that it always this river keeps flowing. The late 1900s and uh, 2000, they discovered that there are phosphorus sheaths around the cells. Literally, biological life is dependent upon phosphorus. These phosphorus sheaths also create pores. And when they become closed, that's actually then poor health. When you take a river and you dam it, what do you create? A lake. When you dam the cell and you clog it, what does that create? Inflammation. So a lake and inflammation, dams, it's all interrelated. It's all about, again, the flowing through of the cells. And so we have this natural type of poration that is extremely important to the body. And when poration does not occur, that's disease. The technology that was developed back in the 1890s, it was called the violet ray. The point person for this was Nikola Tesla. There were actually many engineers that worked on the violet ray. It is a high voltage type of device and they would also then take a vacuum tube or they would take a tube with atmosphere and then it would create an electrical type of charge. And when you put it on the body, then the, the charge would go into the body. I found my own electromagnetic uh, or high voltage type of device that was used to test uh, high voltage lines and then I built my own little handle for it. It really, really worked well. So when you touched it onto the body, uh, then you have what you call electroporation. So you're now taking advantage already what nature is doing. There's already pores in the cells. So now all you're doing is to open up those cells in a very natural type of manner. You're just taking nature and accelerating it. So then the whole situation started occurring in 2019 uh, with the flu. And if you want to call it also COVID, I was given a call by a medical doctor and he said, can you do transcutaneous ozone? And so I'd already been working with a gentleman by the name of Mike Shuckle. We had worked with a device called the Nano Oxygen Accelerator. And that also used Tesla coils. We were using low voltage, but now we needed to step up the game. As uh, Mike has always said, we needed to tame the beast. So that's how it all started out. Now it was the TAS, we call the Transozone. No device like it anywhere in the world. It really took a lot of skill. It pushed Mike's skills all the way to the edge, but he did it. I figured, oh, well, you know, this is... Because I'll be honest, when I started TAS, I was a little skeptical. I was a little skeptical that that something that was going to make high voltage impulse events traverse your flesh was going to be effective or do really anything good at all. I was introduced to Brian David Anderson by a mutual friend in the Palm Desert area. Our entire relationship until today, we've never ever personally met each other. We accomplished all these things remotely. Proof that in a communications era, you can get her done remotely. But I am very, very thankful that, that uh, we were able to do this and that I was able to meet Brian personally. And, you know, we did and we gave each other a big bear hug, and said, hey, you know, because uh, we're kindred spirits. Uh, we both want the same thing. Save this world. To help. To 
make it a better place. You know, I see this, this technology. If we can just get this stubborn medical community to understand, it could be in every emergency room. It could be in every hospital room. It could be there aiding what medicine we have now. Can you imagine being in your room healing without having four IV bags next to you full of antibiotics pumping you with poison? Because you don't need them. Because you have this technology that kills everything. You don't need the antibiotics anymore. Why go through that? Why put a body's anatomy through that if you don't have to? If you can have somebody heal up and actually have the healing process accelerated, which is what it does, because of this flow in and the flow out of the cells. It's just, it's all good. And the only thing that keeps it from being good when we look at all this is money. The FDA and I, I know I probably cross bridges there I shouldn't, but that's what prevents these type of things from benefiting human beings. The FDA's three to seven year approval process has become a graveyard for medical devices, while new prescription medicine is being approved faster than ever. Which raises the question, whose approval is safer? The FDA or actual doctors? I am Todd Rappaport. I am a medical doctor and practicing physician. I'm a board certified anesthesiologist, as well as a fellow of the American Academy of Anti-Aging and Regenerative Medicine. Right now, because of FDA regulations, only medications and surgery can be used to treat or cure disease. I believe that ultimately, the public's willingness and need for these technologies will, will overcome the regulatory limitations that are placed right now. Medical doctors often will not give the therapies they recommend to patients themselves or their families because the therapies they recommend to their patients are guided by guidelines and algorithms that they have to follow to be in compliance with current medical advice and, and recommendations. So they are basically being told or um, guided to be the therapies they recommend. Now to a nightly news investigation into the relationship between doctors and companies that make drugs and devices. A 2017 study showed that roughly half of U.S. doctors received payments from the industry, totaling almost two and a half billion dollars in just one year. Hey, here are 12 patients that need to get on this medication. If you don't put them on this medication, then there's no more Lakers tickets, there's no more alcohol, there's no more dinners, there's no more cash payments, there's no more fishing trips. I mean, I can go down the line. I would personally use a Taz over a pharmaceutical just because of my general philosophy on medicine. I believe that it is better to treat the underlying etiology or cause of a disease rather than just treat the symptoms or signs of a disease. The difference between functional medicine and allopathic medicine is that functional medicine treats the client or patient individually and gets to the etiology or basis of the disease. So personally, I use naturally occurring substances and energy technologies which have no side effects rather than use pharmaceuticals which only treat symptoms and don't ever address the underlying condition. As soon as I got the Taz, I realized how we could use it. The first time I used it was on my hand at the end of a workday, and I'm in my late 40s now, so I had back pain, I was tired, and 30 seconds of the Taz on my palm stopped my back pain and gave me energy like it was the first thing in the morning. And me being in traditional Asian medicine, doing all types of stimulation on the body from the outside in, I realized right away that we could use this on channels, we could use this on extremities, and we could kind of open up acupuncture meridians with this Taz. 
and it would help much better than what we were doing. We were already using no needle methods for 12 years, but this was like taking us into a new lane. The other thing is, because the Taz is a sustained electromagnetic field, like it keeps going and you stay in this field, it's a lot better than using an AccuPen, which is, you know, 10 seconds of stimulation. Real acupuncture is 20, 30 minutes of needling, and then you sit and wait for the needles to cause a reaction in the patient. You can't do that without a needle until you use the Taz that keeps you in that field. I knew it right away, I just didn't know exactly what we would do with it, you know, going forward. It's evolving still. Interestingly enough, if you meet a master acupuncturist, they don't put the needle in and it's dead. They twirl the needle. When you twirl a needle, some people's hands are so good that the needle stays in motion. Electricity moves in rings. We learned this in high school, when you learn about the electrons on the outside of a cell. When I put a disc on somebody, the electrons continue to spin around it, which means it's the equivalent of a twirling needle, which if you were a master acupuncturist, maybe you could do that, but most people are not. So you're getting master level acupuncture from the Taz and some discs. My clients have responded to the Taz no needle acupuncture in an incredible way. The biggest thing I would say about using the Taz for no needle acupuncture is that it's no longer that we're doing acupuncture junior whether we're doing a step down or watered down version of acupuncture, I believe that what we do is as effective as acupuncture, if not better. People's pain disappears in minutes. One of the other guys, while you were doing the interview with him, was saying he could get a fever down in 30 minutes. In our case, it's like two minutes. So it's amazing. Wait, sorry. So, uh, um, so what was the question again? Do you actively use Taz on yourself? I actively use Taz on myself on a daily basis. I've had to do this by necessity because of the exposures I've had over the last two years. By using this prophylactically on the lungs and the sternum uh, and, the, and the chest for respiratory conditions, I've been able to be symptom-free respiratory-wise um, for the last several years, even being exposed to hundreds and hundreds of, quote, COVID positive patients, unquote. When we started using the Taz, it cut the amount of physical work that we needed to do by at least half. When you work on people with the Taz, as opposed to what we were using before, we have a result in a much faster time. That's been a true blessing because we've been able to see more people in less time and get better results. That rarely happens when you can see more people and be able to give them the quality of care that they're looking for in less time. The ultimate goal with Taz is multifaceted. You know, we've, since its conception, have, you know, met Yadi here in Carolina and He's taken, you know, our development and our understanding of how it works on the human body and how the human body with its, I'll call them the rivers and the, the creeks and streams of your nervous system and how it works with those. And our understanding now that it's not just this little microscopic area here, it's your whole body that responds to Taz. Understanding that. And having that feedback come in as an engineer, I'm like, okay, you know, we have so many places now that we can go. We can, we can take this technology now and we can make it work through these points that access your nervous system that Yadi has educated us on and is educating us on and allow that flow and these cells to be aided even more. We're going to be working toward synchronization. We're going to be working toward having one conductor with a wand and all these units are in the orchestra playing together. You could have five tosses all exactly at the same time, like one. Things like that, um, as well as the other devices. Phase relations that change between the devices so that certain flows can be promoted or changed. It's endless what we can do. Thank you. 
During production of this film, Brian David Anderson sadly passed away, leaving a legacy of love and passion for us, the health of humanity, with hopes that one day these ideas will help strengthen modern medicine, his footprints forever on the sands of time. What I have the vision of is not so much to change traditional medicine, but to actually be an addition to it and kind of being blended. Will that change uh, traditional medicine? Yeah, I guess it would. I'm more comfortable with the word synthesis. How can Trivortex and traditional medicine synthesize? Because there's still a lot of good things that are happening in medicine, and how can they blend together and now become this really, really outstanding type of healthcare.